Remember the first time you heard about Firestore, tried to use it, and then realized it can be run locally? Well, that might have been a deal breaker for many people, but not anymore. With Firebase Emulator Suite, you can now easily emulate most of the services locally and not worry about the cost or internet connection. In this video, we'll discuss how to integrate Firebase emulators in your project, so let's get started. First, you will have to install Firebase CLI. You'll find the instructions for your operating system on the official website linked in the description below. These steps also assume you already have your Firebase account set up and ready. Once you've done that, switch to VS Code and create a basic Flutter project. Navigate to your project folder and initialize emulators by typing Firebase in it in your console. First, select emulators from the list, use your existing project or create new, and select couple of emulators. For demo purposes, I'll just use odd Firestore and storage emulators. Just use the default ports for now and keep in mind you can change them later in the configuration file. Emulator UI is a great tool, so keep that enabled. Let's open up firebase.json file, which was generated in previous step, and add rule path, which is a required step in order to use Firebase storage. Create file storage.rules in root of your project and paste default configuration. At this point, we can test if emulators are working by typing Firebase emulator start in console. Navigate to the link provided in the output and check out Firebase UI running in your browser. You'll notice there are different tabs for each service you have previously enabled. Default URLs for the services are pointing to localhost, so we'll have to make a minor adjustment to use them while debugging on the real devices. Go back to firebase.json file and specify host value. You can stop current instance by pressing Ctrl-C in your terminal and restart to apply new configuration. For demo purposes, we'll create simple app with home page, login page and couple of buttons on them. But before digging into the actual code, we also have to add couple of dependencies. Our login page will be a simple widget with one button. Clicking on the button, we'll try to anonymously sign up the user by using Firebase Auth. If sign up is successful, we'll be redirected to a home page and record of an anonymous user should be visible in the emulator UI. Home page will contain two buttons. One will try to add random entry to Firestore and other will try to upload a file. We are using pet provider package here to get temporary directory for file to be stored. Now let's move to main.dart file and remove default code. Our app will need a simple route setup and Firebase initialization lines. What we want to do in the main function is set up Firebase to use emulators instead of live instance. But knowing that we'll probably want to switch between those instances, wrapping the code with if block would be a good idea. Environment variable can be used here as a switch. Don't forget to put const in front of it because these are compiled time constants. Omitting const will result with not reading the variable at all. Configure out function will also try to get host and port values from the environment or use the defaults if unavailable. This gives us maximum flexibility. In case you are debugging on Android emulator, requests must be redirected to a specified IP. Finally, configuration is done by calling use out emulator function with desired host and port. Configuring other services might vary a bit, so make sure you always follow official documentation. However, part where you get port and host will remain mostly the same. Since we are expecting some environment variables, we have to make sure to provide them. Switch to debug tab in VS Code and create launch.json file. Here we're gonna define different configurations for each scenario. First scenario is a case where we want to use Firebase emulator and debug on local iOS or Android emulator. We'll set flag use Firebase emulator to true after dash dash dart dash define. This is a general way of providing environment variables in Dart. If we want to use Firebase emulator while debugging on real device, we'll need to provide our local IP address. We'll get into more details about that later, for now let's just leave some random value. Finally, we might just want to use live instance instead and set Firebase emulator's flag to false. At this point we can run application and see if it's going to build. Notice the lines in console telling us where Firebase services are pointing to. 
App was successfully built, so let's try to log in. This is the error you'll probably run into. Firebase emulators are using clear text communication and our Android configuration won't allow that. Although it's easy to fix, I probably don't have to mention this is for local purposes only and should never be used in production. Official documentation is also warning us about that. To fix clear text error, we have to open Android folder and look into app slash source slash debug. Open up Android manifest file and add this line to allow clear text. Notice this patch will only be used in debug mode. Now let's try to run application again and see if error is fixed. This time tapping on login button does actually work and we are redirected to home page. Other buttons seems to be working as well, but to confirm if records are actually written, let's check out emulator UI. And this is it, records are indeed captured in our local emulator. The last thing we want to make sure is, will this actually work when debugging on real device? Let's go back to launch.json and get our local IP address. Getting local IP will vary depending on your OS, but more importantly it might change once in a while. A quick hack to get around that issue is embedding shell command into variable and get fresh local IP on each launch. This is how you can get it on Linux, macOS and Windows will have slightly different version. Finally, let's restart emulators and try to launch on the actual device. After successful login and messing around with the app, our records are still captured by local emulator, which is exactly what we wanted. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.